What's going on guys, my name is Sabathwa and today we're going to take a look at how you can optimize the performance of your Visual Studio Code setup. Let's jump right in. One of the simplest optimizations that you can make is to choose a proper working directory. What I like to do is have a dev folder on my main desktop. And inside of this dev folder, I keep all of the repositories that I'm currently actively using. So my dot files repository, my game decks repository, and some other ones here and there. The more nuanced of a directory you pick, the more performant VS Code can be. Now, this isn't something that you have to really worry about if you're just working on your own projects, but as you can imagine, if you're working at a big company that has one huge repository that has a lot of files in it, it can get really cumbersome for VS Code to sort of index that and showcase to you. So make sure you pick the correct working directory. And so once you pick the proper working directory, another optimization you can make is exclude files from VS Code. So as a web developer, if you're working with Node, you know that every single project built with Node is going to have the Node Modules folder. These Node Modules can get really long. So what you're going to want to do in VS Code specifically is to hide the Node Modules. And as soon as you save that setting, you're going to notice that these Node Module folders are gone. And this is another way to make VS Code a little bit faster. When you first get started with VS Code, the thing that you're most likely going to do is download a ton of extensions because that's sort of the power of VS Code. As you can see, I've got, you know, the Groovebox theme. I've got this Nomo dark icon theme, prettier. I've got a ton of extensions installed. But this is the third optimization that you can make. Third optimization is removing any unnecessary extensions that you don't use. So I'm going to give you this example of the bracket pair colorizer extension. This is one of the most popular extensions in VS Code. VS code. It has over 7 million downloads. But turns out this extension was actually pretty slow. Let's take a look. So first, let's just take a look at what this extension done. All it does is colors the matching brackets inside of your editor. So this blue curly open is going to match with this one. And you know, this open paren is going to match with this one, things like that. It's not something that might seem complex. But if you look deeper into it, this is something that runs every time you type in open curly or open parentheses. And that is something that can really slow down VS Code and turns out that it was running pretty slowly. So the VS Code team Team eventually in 2021 figured out a way to optimize it and make it 10,000 X faster. But before 2021, right, it was running pretty slowly. Apparently the TypeScript project, which had over 42 K lines of code takes about 10 seconds until this extension sort of completes updating. And during these 10 seconds, all features that are powered by extensions such as auto completion stop functioning. So what I'm trying to say is that when you are downloading extensions, you know, definitely download them because they're most likely fine, but also be careful about which extensions you're downloading because they could be giving you a performance hit. So the last thing I want to talk about are just some uh, optimizations that I made personally that are different from the default VS Code settings. So the first thing that's default is I believe breadcrumbs, but I know that I've never used this UI and it just sort of seems wasteful. So I disable it and just make the UI a little bit cleaner. That probably doesn't save much of anything, but it feels cleaner. Now, one thing that does save a lot of performance, at least in my opinion, is this minimap editor. So by default, VS Code enables this minimap. And I've scaled it up to three just so you guys can see here that, you know, this is the minimap. If you have a really large file, then it might be useful to have this type of scrolling functionality on the side. I feel that this hinders performance. So this is another thing that I like to turn off because I don't want to make my VS Code slower for any possible reason. Another really useful thing to turn off is search on type. So when you're doing a command shift F, you can search through all directories. And uh, by default, I believe this is enabled. As I start typing, VS Code is automatically beginning to do the search. This isn't something that I usually use because what I want to do is type a full word and then press enter and then allow VS Code to search. So this is like another small optimization where uh, search on type to be false. And as you can see here, as I start typing, it's not performing the automatic search. It's only when I press enter does VS Code perform the search. And of course, you know, you're probably going to want to enable GPU acceleration on your terminal. I, I don't really know if this does anything, but it feels faster when I open the terminal. So I'm not going to complain about that. 
Another thing that is worth disabling is code lens. So code lens, it gives you like an in-depth analysis of who wrote the code. I've read online that this can sort of hinder performance. And so this is again, something that I disable by default, especially because I'm basically working solo on all my projects. Now, if I was working with a team, this might be very helpful, but at this point, it's not necessary for me. So yeah, that's gonna be it for today. Hopefully now you guys have an understanding of how to optimize your VS Code setup by minimizing your workspace directory, excluding unneeded files, removing unnecessary extensions, or, and also updating some of the default settings. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and consider subscribing for more videos on developer productivity. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.